Welcome to the celebration of you. I'm your host, Holly Dowling. I'm thrilled to share with you incredible people from all over the world who are living and leading extraordinary lives. From overcoming immense adversity to discovering the secret sauce to leading with courage and grace, their stories are going to bring you hope and inspiration. Now, let the stories begin. Everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you to the amazing listeners around the world. As I always like to kick off the show, and it's a celebration of you because the individuals that I get to celebrate and you get to hear are all because of the celebrating of you people out there and we're now in 90 countries around the world and I can only thank you for being there and your comments and your messages of the stories that are impacting your life and giving you hope. That's why this show exists. So I thank you for being with me and you all know because you listen that I get goosebumps and tears and you never know what's going to happen and lots of laughs. It's just serendipity and how the divine works. And I always tell you, please be open to the doors that open and the people you're going to meet. So this beautiful guest that I'm going to introduce you to another serendipitous moment. I almost don't even have the heart to tell you how we met because I think I'm going to dangle the carrot and we might tell you at the end so I can keep you hanging knowing how did they meet? Because it was an instant connection and a soul sister. So may I have the luxury and privilege of introducing you to Joanne Bauer. Joanne, thank you for being here. Holly, thank you so much for the invitation. I'm just honored to be here and to join um, all of your listeners. Well, I kind of feel a little, you know, it's not often, Joanne, that I meet somebody and then find out, because I want to celebrate you, that your entire background has been in broadcast, online host, on camera, right? You're the person that's usually doing the interviewing. So I'm like, ooh. (laughs) You never know. That could make me a terrible interviewee. We don't know yet. (laughs) No, 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 no. I think it's going to be exactly the opposite. And I'm like, well, you know what, darling? We have no scripts. Here we go. Let's just rock and roll and go right along, right? (laughs) Yes. So one of the things that I loved and we'll dangle the carrot when we met, was not only the instant connection, it was knowing I'm such in awe, I'm so in awe, and I know everybody that gets to hear your story is going to be too, of people, women and men in this world, that have on the outside what looks like such an amazing, successful career, you're doing what people dream of, and you choose to say, I'm not that happy and it's time to make a shift and it's never too late to make a shift. And I want to go do what I'm passionate about. So Joanne, this is kind of why I'm so intrigued because you're doing what a lot of people wish they could dream. They could, and they never do. Yeah. Right. And you did it and you did did. it. (laughs) (laughs) So let's start with like the now, and then we'll go to the story behind the story. So tell everybody your passion and what you're doing right now. Cause it actually happened since we met you're doing it. Totally. I um, stepped into the world of real estate just um, in the last month. I've had a a, just a heart and a passion for homes forever. And in fact, I've sold um, most of my own homes myself. And it's just been something I've always loved. And so for the last 15 years, Holly, I talked about becoming a realtor and going into this industry full time. And it was never, it never felt like the right time. And it felt like I would be turning my back on what had been my childhood dream and then had become my career. Um, and to be able to say, Oh no, like I was given that gift. And earlier I had the honor of uh, being on a radio show last week. And I said, you know, I retired last month And now I'm doing real estate and another person on the panel said, no, Joanne, you rewired. You did not retire. Oh, I love that. I know. (laughs) I know. It was like, yes, you're right. I've rewired. Oh, and I, okay. That one just gave me goosies. You're exactly right. Because retire, people look at that word and it's like life is over and people look at retirement. Some people are afraid of it, right? Like you dream of it and then it's going to hit you. And then what am I going to do with myself? Um, rewire. I love that. I know. Oh, I wrote that one down. I have to keep that one. That's (laughs) going to stay in our side pocket. That's like a good one, babe. Um, you know, what's fascinating too, is that, and this is what's cool. I did not know that you'd had a dream of doing this for 15 years. And I do know that for the last 15 years, you've been doing a lot of shining the spotlight on amazing stories, some very horrific, some heart-wrenching stories, because you've been in broadcast, right? And you've done 
So tell us, take us back to even maybe before the 15 years, what I'd love to know is take me back to a pivotal moment in your life. And maybe it was when you were a young girl, maybe it was later in life, um, going through, which we both have in common, a tough marriage that we had to end. I don't know what that pivotal moment was, Joanne, but when you think about a pivotal moment that really helped you become the person you are today, whether it was because you fell down on your knees in extreme adversity and you pulled yourself back up or just something else. I'd love to know that pivotal moment that you can go back to in your life. I, I think I have a couple and I think that's because I feel like I've lived a few lives in this one beautiful lifetime. Mm. You know, I grew up a farmer's daughter um, milking cows and baling hay. And, you know, it was really work from sun up to sundown. And, you know, no one in my family had ever been to college. My father had never even been to high school. I didn't know we were poor. Do you know what mm. I mean? Like I, I had no idea outside of getting free lunch at school. I didn't know that, you know, monetarily we were poor. Um, but one of my very first memories as a child, um, I was four. I used to walk around with my mom's hairbrush <laughs> and I would pretend to be Walter Cronkite and I would talk about what all the farm animals were doing. And then I would say, and that's the way it was. Um, and then at four, I go, wait four. a second. I'm picturing this gorgeous little brunette walking around at four years old with an airbrush. Yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, from my, and, and I will say this from my youngest memory, I knew that I wanted to be a television anchor and reporter. And I had an aha moment in my forties. You know how, when you wake up in the middle of the night, like you sit straight up and you go, oh, I had one of those moments because I'd always wondered how did this kid from Wisconsin who grew up the way I grew up always have this trajectory. And I had this aha moment that woke me out of my sleep. And that was on the farm you know, this is before the internet and any of those things. And farmers live and die by the weather, mm -hmm. right? You got to yeah. know when you can get your crops in. And so whether when we were having our breakfast or we were having our lunch or our dinner, the, the local news was on the TV. And all of the attention went to the TV because we were waiting for the weatherman to come on, right? Oh boy, yes. <laughs> and so I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, I didn't have a lot of nurturing in my childhood, but the guy in the TV in that little black and white box with the antenna in the corner of the room, everybody stopped and listened to what he had to say. And mm -hmm. that was a moment of me going, that is what I sought. Um, and I went through this. And so I became a storyteller and, um, and I've loved it. And I had the, just the, the gift of telling the amazing stories of everyday people and covering, you know, international events, some heart wrenching and gut wrenching and yeah. others just joyful and wonderful. But I also had, um, about maybe 12 years ago, you know, as you mentioned, my marriage was failing. Um, I had become very ill I had to take a year off of work. I, so I no longer had my identity, right? Mm -hmm. I identified by what I did because I was, I still had not nurtured that little girl inside who needed to be seen and heard. Oh, that's powerful. Yeah. And my marriage was ending. I didn't have a, my job. I didn't have my health. And I remember crying out to God on the living room floor pounding, you know, the snot everywhere, you know, like one yeah. of those guttural things, yeah. just asking over and over again, why? And I heard this voice and it's not my voice. Cause number one, I don't sound like that. And number two, I don't, I, I'm not, I wouldn't have spoken to myself that kindly, but I heard a voice say, you have to trust with nothing. Mm. And I remember pulling my head up off the hardwood and going, I remember saying out loud, okay. And I made the decision then to sell everything that I owned. Um, I literally went through the house and put price tags on everything. 
had people come in the following weekend, sold everything I owned. My house had been on the market for months. No one had looked at it in three months. Um, and I decided to drive across country and end up in Phoenix. And the night, this is how it's so God for me. The night before I was leaving with my little two seater car and my little tiny dog and what I could fit in it, I went to sleep and I got a text at 11 o'clock from my realtor who texted me and said, you just got a cash offer on your house. <gasps> and I still get goosebumps. I'm covered in goosebumps. <gasps> when I talk about it. Oh my goodness. The day. Oh my gosh. I'm covered in goosies, Joanne. Yeah. You're in your car with your dog and you literally had only what you could fit in your car. You sold everything. I sold everything. I ended up having a few more things, little stuff that would fit in the back of a pickup. But I just, I knew I had to start over. And I knew for me, because I had built my identity on what I did and what I had, um, I had to risk it all to find out who I was and that I was both enough mm. and I was not too much. And I think I struggled with that dichotomy my whole adult professional life. And when you think about the profession you were in, as many people that are in professions that put you in the public eye, right? I think many human beings battle that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I think I'm, as I'm listening to you, I'm having my own personal aha going. I think it's a constant challenge to make sure. And I think that's where having a faith and having a spiritual side to your life is the only way we get through. Absolutely. I mean, it was everything to me. And I... I ended up a friend of a friend of a friend ha ha was renting a room in this house kind of, if in you know, compared to the way I was living, it felt like I was in the hood and I just rented this small little room and I ended up volunteering and eventually working um, part time in ministry, um, doing a lot of yoga, working retreats, just really giving up everything of material value so I could truly find out the real value. Um, and I couldn't have done that. Honestly, Holly, I, my, I was too egocentric previously to, to have found and appreciated what was really important in life. And you know what? I love the visual right now of you laying on that floor, on the hardwood floor. And I think everybody's been there where you're crying your eyes at the snot. I love how you said, you know, the snot, the really big cry, right? You know, <laughs> yes. and I've been there and I'm literally screaming at God. I can remember it. And yet the voice you heard, no one can take that away from you. You heard a voice of a much higher power and recite those words again, because there's a moment that I just had as you shared that, that what was that the, voice? The exact words were you have to trust with nothing. And look, oh, I'm getting the goosies again. And look at the moment when you did that and let go of everything, got in your car, and at 11 o'clock at night, you get the text message. Yeah. It's like you were put at the edge of the cliff and being told trust and surrender, and you did. And that's what it really, like, I had to learn. You know, I've always had a strong faith, but what I, it, it took me being on my knees and at my bottom to realize that I never really trusted God. I trusted myself. I made things happen. I was playing God for 40 years. I didn't know I was doing that, but I was doing that by the actions, um, by the words, by the, the way I was living my life white knuckling it, making things happen, accomplishing, you know, just showing up, being more, doing more. Um, and it wasn't until everything was gone, um, that I found everything. Mm. Oh my goodness. There's your book. You know, you're going to have a book one day. I just feel it. I already can see it. I think I told you that day we met. <laughs> you know, and it's so funny because I've had, and I, I have to check myself on this. I know there's some journaling to do around it because I've had so many people say, Joe, you must write a book. And I always um, push back against it. And I think, oh, my emotions are coming up. So I know that it's true. But um, I love to tell other people's stories mm -hmm. and there's still something in me. There's still some healing to be done. Of course, there's always healing, but somehow I don't feel 
my stories worth telling. Mm. And mm. so I know that's something I still need to work on. Mm -hmm. Um, and I am, um, but yeah. Isn't it interesting too, how, when we met and I told you, I, I want to celebrate you because I have a show celebration of you when I meet amazing people. And it's, you looked at me and you just smiled and you said, it's what the world needs. We need more of this. Yeah. And so interesting to hear you say that because you've made your life has been about shining a spotlight on other people and not always celebration, right? That's part yeah. of what, yeah. what I remember you shared is some of the heartache of having to see and watch and share the news of which is very deliberate. I mean, you just get to sad. Yeah. You get so negative, right? You've had to experience it close up and, and yet your story, and this is, this is how God's going to work. There's no coincidence that we met. And there's no, as my mother used to say, there's no such thing as a coincidence. It's a God incident, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and the fact that you just said, I still need to heal. I think that's today more than ever. Wouldn't you agree that the people that people are gravitating to are people that are real and authentic and not trying to be perfect, right? Like yes. the, the people that are willing to pull back the layers of the onion and share their stories, even if we're scared to death to do it, it helps other people. I, I just shared something a couple of years ago that I'd never talked about for 27 years. And honestly, Joe, I think part of my struggle was, was I still living in shame? Was I afraid to tell the world? Would they look at me differently? And yes. finally, when I let go of that, I remember, and I'm just telling you this because you need to hear this because there's something about what your journey has been that's going to help others. And I called my brother and I said, it's happening tomorrow and I'm really scared. I'm feeling like I'm going to pull the plug. They're going to release this big article. And he said, no, sis, it's time. You see, when you reveal, you heal. Yeah. And yes. I, wow. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And it's so true. And, you know, I was thinking of that. I was just doing a little meditation before we connected today. And, um, you know, shame and fear are shackles. And it, we carry so much of it that's not even ours. And, you know, I've had multiple failed relationships and I've had to go back and look at why I was attracting those people into my life, why I was making those choices. And, you know, thank God, sometimes I can, you know, I can look back and laugh at some of these, you know, <laughs> you know, like, you know, you know, uh, uh, just for example, I tell the story of, um, marriage number two of being, um, of looking in the mirror in the bathroom, um, of the venue and holding onto the vanity so tight and rocking back and forth and saying, what am I doing? Mm. What am I doing? Yet I knew it on this, you know, guttural intuitive level, but the outside everything had to look a certain way. Um, and you know, PS don't marry a stripper. Hello. I, could, I probably should have known better. Wait, wait, wait. That's a great line. Wait, wait, hold on. Wait. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It probably would have been. Well, <laughs> Stop it. That decision. I just had a visual of you and I sitting at that little venue with magic Mike. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this for real? Was one of these a stripper? Is that for real? <laughs> I told you I made some really bad decisions. Well, when God does a joke, you know, sometimes they're pretty darn good, but you're like, well, it looked good, you know? <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. I love you even more right now. You're like, I guess the writing was on the wall or we could say on the stage, right? You <laughs> Oh, I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. This just made my day. <laughs> but that's the point. The point is I've had to learn that shame and fear are shackles. Mm -hmm. And when I chose to break those to be free, and actually I didn't choose. That was a surrender. That was a, okay, God, I can't take this anymore. I know that for me, um, divinity wants me it just has given me a spirit of joy and light and love and grace. And I can't shine that light if I am shackled by um, fear and shame and regrets. And so I've had to learn how to walk through them, mm -hmm. to release them, to forgive myself, to forgive others so that 
the light and the love and the joy that sometimes I just feel under my skin can shine because somebody needs it. Somebody needs to, to be reflected in that. Oh, okay. You're just not, okay. Get ready for goosies because I am listening to you. And it was about a week ago in my deep prayer and meditation time, this huge thing came to me and I had no idea when I was going to say it. All I heard is when you're broken, you're the most beautiful because the Mm. light can shine through. Oh yeah. I got that right now. I'm feeling that now. I got the goosies. I am telling you, that's what I just. Say you it one are, more time. You want to hear it again? I, I, I know. I'm covered in goosies. Look at us. When you're broken, you're your most beautiful because yeah. the light can shine through. Through. That's right. And you just said it in a way that was the most beautiful. And to hear it from somebody like you, and that is why. Oh, Joe, this is why I have this show because if one person out there is listening and they are in their dark little yes. world sitting and I call it sitting in the corner of my closet when that's mm-hmm. where I used to go. Yeah. And if they can hear this and go, look at you and look at what you've, what we would never have known you've been through. And you're coming out on the other side saying, this is who I am. And you don't need to be perfect to be priceless. Exactly. You know, like, you know, I'm perfectly imperfect, yes. you know, I, I, you know, I joke a lot and I don't say, I used to say this a lot. I, I don't use the terminology that much now, but you know, I just kind of celebrated that I was a hot mess. Um, <laughs> you know, been a hot mess married to a stripper. Know, yeah, <laughs> I was a hot mess. Um, and you know, now I get to look back and I get to see this really fragile little girl who was so desperate to be seen, to be heard, to, to be touched, to feel loved, you know, and I have nothing but love and admiration for my parents. My mother passed 16 years ago, but she grew up in horrifically abusive, um, extreme poverty, no indoor plumbing, no indoor electricity, alcoholism. It was just as bad as it could possibly be. So she didn't have it to give. Um, and so I had to learn how to reparent myself Mm. and to forgive myself for the choices that I made. I love that you just said something that I don't want anybody to miss. You learned how to reparent yourself and why that's so powerful to me. I guess I've chosen to not live in a place of pointing fingers and blaming people for where we are today. I'm a big believer in, you know, nothing's perfect. Every family's dysfunctional. My parents did the best they could with what they had. And I know that's not, some people would say, oh, but you, how could you forgive them for this? I mean, you know what, you know what? It's the best they knew with what they had, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when you just said, you know, reparenting, we have a choice. We can either, either choose to move forward and heal and stop blaming the world for where we are. Right. And I would say too, there is no healing until we stop playing victim. Mm. And I did not know I was playing. And my goodness, let me tell you, there was no bigger victim. I was, you know, Oh, I have to do everything. Oh, this, Oh, that I didn't know I was doing that. But until I could see, because unless I'm willing to take 100% responsibility for everything that I do, that, that I say that I think unless I do that, I'm a victim because then somehow there's an outside influence, another person in another situation that I can blame. But if there's no one else to blame, then I'm responsible. And and then I'm fully present in that moment. And as we know, you know, that the point of power is always in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Um, and so if I'm a victim, I've, I've, chosen to give away my power. I've chosen to give away my choice and I just don't do that anymore. Do you realize how powerful and profound everything that's coming out of your mouth is? I'm just sitting here smiling with my eyes closed. I'm sitting here going, <laughs> I'm literally like, do you see, whether you realize it or not, are you prepared for your next journey? Cause I think you're going to be called to a spiritual healing. I, I think you're going to help others. And I mean, I, I get these things that just come through me, but I'm listening to you, Joe, and you are your journey is people want to hear from somebody that's been through what they've been through. Tell me you've walked in my shoes, right? Mm. And to be that gift for others. I know real estate you've been so excited about. I'm thinking there's something even more on this horizon for you. And you could be starting an entire spiritual healing retreat. 
Mm. And it's so funny that you just said that I'm, I'm in my office and I've got <laughs> these two big vision boards right in front of me mm-hmm. and uh, directly in front of me, what I'm looking at, it, there's a beautiful waterfall picture and these flowers in the background. And then it says different words I've pulled. And one says, head to the source, indulge, volunteer, climb a mountain, go on a retreat, embark on a spiritual journey. Oh, well, now, <laughs> I don't think there's any coincidence in this moment. <laughs> well, you'll be coming to my next, I have a, an annual elite retreat and you have to be invited or nominated and women come from around the world. And, um, it's a really unbelievable experience of letting your hair down and getting, oh. so consider that one done. Um, yes. I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Because this is all part of where you're going and, uh, look at us. We've planned your entire next journey and you had no idea this would happen. I love it. <laughs> See, that's the thing is that when you open yourself up to possibilities, I really believe that the divine drop brings them in and they come in different shapes and forms and things you might never think of. Um, but that's where the joy, had I not gone through what I went through, I couldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be, I would have had no reason to take a good, hard look at myself. Mm. And isn't it true that it, see, this is what I love. You and I want everybody to please don't miss this. Even through the really messiest times and the darkest times of our life, those are opportunities that can be seen as a gift. Look at what you gained through that process yeah. and look at who you are today. Resilience, right? Perseverance, tenacity, your spiritual world, even more enhanced because of it. So these are, I, I look at all the dark times and I, I bet you when you and I get together for our ravioli, you know, our secret new thing <laughs> we're going to do, wait. I can't wait. We are going to you know, we probably have a lot of common, um, now I can't say I married a stripper, but I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can say I've been through some really crappy experiences. And, um, when we share, but we don't dwell on it. We look at it as I wouldn't be who I'm so glad I had that yeah. because of who I am today, Yeah, you know, and you are just a shining, you're just like this shining lighthouse right now. I, I wish we were sitting in person because I feel it coming through the phone. Uh, me too. Oh, I love. And I have to ask you, so not to have to go back to like something, not icky, but a time when you were in the broadcast, right? Yeah. And when I saw this, I thought I've got to ask you because just having been so close to it, you were literally covering 9-11 from the Twin Towers. Is that correct? That is, yeah. Then when I worked in uh, Baltimore at the time for uh, an ABC television, and when the second plane hit the towers, my news director just yelled, go. And um, my sweet friend, Preston Mitchum, he's an amazing photographer, um, and Mike Neely, a producer, we ended up um, going um, to New York. And, you know, it is... When you're in that environment, you turn everything off and you are just working. You're just a machine, right? You have to be just a machine. And I'll never forget. It's actually also tied to one of my most, the things I'm most proud of. Um, The first night there, you know, just people are coming up to you with pictures um, of their loved ones, their missing loved ones. And they're just trying to get anyone with a camera to put the picture of this loved one on a camera. um, And so they can see if they can find them. Of course, no one understood that, you know, that there really weren't going to be survivors at that point in, in the towers that had fallen. And I did this story on this gentleman and his brother and sister, and I interviewed them. And, um, Three months later, I'd gone back. I had learned that his wife had had a baby the day before. Oh, Um, wow. Wow. And I went back three months later, and I met with his wife and the baby and his parents and his family, just everyone. And we spent the whole day doing this story. And they were a spiritual family. Um, And it, it it was a beautiful event. But fast forward, I think, five years and I get a card in the mail. I live now is li- living in another city, working in another market in Minneapolis. And I get a card from the brother. And he said, I was cleaning out my mom's garage and I stumbled across the tape you made for her. Um, I never saw any of the stories that you did. And um, 
I just want to thank you oh, be- because no one else would have told it that way. Oh. And because if nothing else, I just, that was always my thing. Like, let me just tell the story of this person. And to be able to have that, to know that all these years later, you know, it meant something to him that I honored him in this pain that I honored his brother. Um, and the other part of that, we, I was there for, we were there for about a week, you know, just working nonstop, you know, you're working 18, 20 hours a day and it's insanity. And Mm -hmm. it was our last day there. And we're at the wall. What was it? St. Vincent's hospital at the wall where, you know, everyone had posted the pictures of their loved one and just went on forever. And, um, we got there and my photographer and I got done shooting. It was raining that day. We put our gear down and we just fell into each other and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. It was just, and I don't know how long we were like that, you know, a few minutes. And when we let go of one another, there were multiple other television cameras on us. (gasps) And it was life changing for me. Um, because I felt in that moment invaded, like I was just grieving and it was very confusing. And I, I, you know, it was a changing moment for me. That is the moment in time for me in television where I went from something that absolutely fed my soul, just fed me, filled me up to absolutely eating away at me. Mm. You experienced, oh gosh, I'm covered in goosies. You experienced what everyone on the other side of the camera has felt when you are, when they're grieving, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. You felt the human side of what Mm -hmm. that feels like and to feel invaded. Yeah. (gasps) Whoa. And I struggled with that because, you know, I always got sent on the stories. Like if there was, you know, if someone died at the hand of man or mother nature, we call it the door knock. You know, you knock on the door and, you know, and then how, um, how do you feel? You know, it's not that disgusting, but it basically is that disgusting, right? But because I love people and I connect with people and I'd be crying before I even knocked on the door, I got sent on those stories. Why? Because I'd get the story and I struggled with that. Like I felt like I was using people. Mm my whole career. And I knew that I honored people. I knew I was respectful, but I did battle. It was an internal battle for many years. And don't you wonder, and I mean, we could go on and on on this, but I wonder if that has something to do with it finally taking, because you have such a high EQ, sensory acuity, right? A high spiritual cue that it, you were not a wall that could disassociate from it. You absorbed all those emotions. Yes. And psychologically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, after absorbing this for so long, do you feel that there is any relation to you getting ill? Oh, completely. I I absolutely know that without a doubt. I know it without a doubt. Wow. Um, You know, I got so sick that I could not work. And there's no way I would have left my career. Right. Because I identify by what I did. If I'm not that, what am I? Um, and I know that God, I don't want to use the word took that away, but he invited me into a space where I had no choice, but to lay on my back and to cry out to him. Mm -hmm. Yep. That was your big calling. And I don't want anybody to miss this, that no matter what's going on in your world, your body, your spirit, your mind, and your heart will manifest everything. There's only Absolutely. so long we can go on as human beings. Absolutely. You know, I, I had really severe Graves disease, which impacts your, your thyroid. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so think of kind of the throat chakra. Um, after I'd finally got healthy enough, it took me about two years. Then I literally ruptured my C6, C7. So again, the same area, um, because I wasn't speaking my truth. I wasn't living mm. where I needed. I wasn't living my best life. Um, and I, it had to get to the point where all of that was taken away, um, for me to be able to move forward and into what God would have for me. I love that you can look at it like that too. 
I love this, Joe. Thank you. You are, I'm telling you, I'm the one with a title, inspirational speaker. Hello. I think I've been inspired today beyond measure right now. I'm like, oh, you are such a gift. Oh my goodness. You're such a gift. I have to ask you this before we wrap this up. And that is because you've been through so many experiences and journeys and, and who you are today. If you look back at that younger self, you know, the kicking butt and rocking it in your early twenties, right? Making your dreams happen and going after it. If you look back and you could give her any advice based on who you are today and what you've been through, what advice would you give your younger self in her Mm -hmm. early twenties? I would tell her, number one, she is enough. She does not have to earn the love of anyone. She is loved simply because she breathes. Oh, simply because you breathe. I don't want anyone to miss that. You are loved simply because you breathe. I love you. You are stuck in my life for the rest of your life. I hope you know that. (laughs) I I just want to thank you so much. This has been an honor. I'm looking at your beautiful smile uh, and I'm just blessed beyond words. Thank you so much. Oh, this is Joe. This is amazing. And if people want to, and I know they'll want to, if they want to reach out, learn more about you, like, or just even find out about anything or ask you a question, what is the best way for you? How do you prefer people reach out to you? Can you tell us? Yeah, absolutely. You can go to my website. It's just joannbauer.com, J-O-A-N-N-B-A-U-E-R. Um, you can reach out via email there. You can also find me on social media. And, um, you know, I, I love to hear from people. I love to hear their stories. I love to lift them up. So thank you. Oh, you have lifted people up. Your story is going to give people hope. And um, I can't wait to hear from people around the world. And I thank you for being in my life. And I guess we can't leave people hanging. So just to let everybody know, this is serendipity at its best. We met at a nail salon, getting our nails done (laughs) next to each other. (laughs) We're talking about all this deep, beautiful, spiritual stuff, but we were getting our nails done. (laughs) We were, we literally sat right next to each other. And before you know it, we're having this conversation before, you know, it, we're hugging each other, giving each other our cards. And, and here we are. And that is how beautiful this world and the universe works. So Mm. trust, surrender, and be open, right? Right. Mm. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for another awesome celebration of you. If you were inspired by this story, please share it with your family and friends and hashtag your story matters. I'd love to hear from you. So please leave a comment on iTunes and absolutely please come to my website, hollydowling.com. Leave a comment there too. And while you're there, pick up your free gift. Most importantly though, just remember that your life is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift back. Thank you.